asking to kiss someone in the past was very scary, but right now is like a health risk. <laughs> so it's like this added complication. Hi, my name is Nervosison. I am an author, an educator, and a public speaker. I go into workplaces and schools and educate on transgender identity and language. And I also published the book Finding Nevo uh, a few years ago. I would describe my dating life, I guess, uh, complicated. I don't know, like the qualities that I look for in a partner uh, historically have been emotionally unavailable, but I'm working on that. I guess I look for honesty and really clear communication is like a primary one. I guess like for them to identify with queerness and with non-monogamy as well, and for that hopefully to not be too much of a new thing for them. Um, obviously I think it's really valid for people to be experimenting with that stuff and trying it out, but I guess for me I've been doing it for quite a few years now and I like to be on a similar playing field with the person that I'm dating. I think another feature of ethical non-monogamy is really prioritizing my relationship with myself and being my own primary partner, not crossing my own boundaries to make someone else feel more comfortable. For me, it feels like my relationship with myself has to be at this level. And if someone wants to join that relationship, they have to bring it up. But if they start to degrade the connection that I have with myself, then why would I want to engage in that. I like th thinking about myself in the third person sometimes and treating myself like a lover and you know running myself a really nice bath and just being like this is for you Nev like I'm gonna be the best boyfriend you've ever had and setting up candles and like maybe even rose petals sometimes I don't know and like a snack plate and a glass of wine and I think that's a really beautiful thing that I do for myself. I think it really varies depending on the person um, obviously I think enthusiastic consent is like a first and foremost priority for mine within relationships and it's something I establish very, very early on, even just with affection, like, do you want a hug? Are you a hugging person? Is my hand on your knee okay? Would you like to cuddle? It's totally fine if not. Uh, I think really creating an environment where you're not just asking for permission or asking for consent, but also really allowing for a no because I think people won't say no if that space isn't created and I don't want an inauthentic yes. So I guess for me in my consent practice, like I often expect no to whatever question I'm posing and that way if I receive a no, then that just confirms what I was expecting. And if I receive a yes, then I'm pleasantly surprised. I don't know, I'm very much like someone who is romantic and who has big feelings inside of my body and I guess some of the most fulfilling dating experiences have been some of the harder ones but that I've been able to garner lessons from that I have then used in the future and I can see myself now even in dating situations drawing back on those lessons and using those lessons again. I spend a lot of time, I'm very analytical and I spend a lot of time kind of analyzing situations and dates and dynamics and you know that's that's fine, I think that's a good thing. Um, but I'm often kind of picking up on not necessarily red flags but I call them like pins. So when something will come up in a dynamic I'm kind of like hmm I'm gonna put a pin in that one and I'm gonna put a pin in that and just kind of keep putting pins and then if I take a step back and it looks like a red flag then I know that that's a red flag and I need to choose a course of action and recently in dating someone I had this moment where I realized that there weren't really pins to put in there are actually a bunch of green flags like there are lots of things that were happening in the dynamic that felt really overtly good clearly seeing green flags um, was really joyful for me Community is everything. I don't know how to, I don't want to underestimate that. Trans community, LGBTIQA community, Jewish community, those communities are everything. I think that feeling like we belong is a sensation that cannot be easily defined. There is this element of loneliness that we feel in our lives and of feeling other and to be surrounded by other 
others <laughs> makes us feel a part of something. I don't feel alone like I did in high school, for example, like being the only kind of advocate or the only feminist in high school and not really having partnerships in that. Like I feel like I have a lot of partners. Yeah, I think community has been really important in this time and I don't know what I would have done without it. I, I never know what I would have done without it.